good day students we shall continue with our venture in tips techniques in pathology for students mainly post graduates and the topic is fixatives part 2 this topic i had deliberately divided into two and you shall see why on one side i shall be just scrolling through some of the slides this is the definition of fixative and how well a slide has been fixed is seen kindly go back to class 1 the various topics or subheadings under which this has been dealt with the mode of fixing some of the specimen particularly the brain in the brain jar and how well the fixation reflects on a histology slide and the various modalities are given on my left a little care is always needed i had shown you earlier what autolysis is what is heterolysis what is putrefaction and how well this could be avoided on an endometrial tissue the aims of the fixative the ideal fixative were all covered it is only for the continuity of it that i am showing this kindly go back to it this is the first important slide for the day the classification of fixatives one method of fixation is chemical fixation it can be a coagulation a cross linking or a compounding which leads to an inherent structure to the tissue this we shall and will know how do you classify fixatives is a very common question the problem is unless we are very well prepared with this our fluency in the examination will reflect on us fixatives can be classified based on the structure accordingly there can be micro anatomical which shows the exact structure of the slide the cytology and the histology second one will be the cytological fixatives namely the nucleus and the cytoplasm and how the various constituents are being preserved third one is histochemical preserving the histo histological and the chemical nature of it so as to demonstrate the chemical component example what are you going to do when you do a pas thing there is another method of classifying called baker's classification this person has contributed a lot on histopathological techniques one is coagulant fixatives which are again divided into the many aldehydes formaldehyde glutaraldehyde etc oxides such as oxalium tetroxide potassium dichromate acetic acid and the next one will be non coagulant fixatives which include the panel seen below so kindly by heart this particular classification it is worth its weight we have seen this in the past i am not going into it what happens when we do not fix is reflected on the screen so much of our future lies in preserving our past at least in pathology mainly histopathology this is very much true these are the various mechanisms already mentioned but then we will again touch upon it at the molecular level the fixatives have the property of coagulating the protein by formation formation of cross links between the protein molecules and by maintaining the relationship to each other after all that is the definition of a fixative in as life like a manner as possible there is an entire array of fixatives and we will have to choose them sometimes we are not happy with the slide in spite of a good technician and a good set of reagents behind us so the choice of fixatives is given over here these again can be asked and if you are going to be a histopathologist you should know something about it for example bovine fluid for gastrointestinal biopsies zenker's fluid for bone marrow biopsies b5 for bone marrow core and tumors and the list continues over here there are a good set of 
fixatives for electron microscopy itself. Is it clear? So, such as low trial decade and so on. So, I would like you people to kindly go through it repeatedly. It is not possible for us to memorize, but then we should know that there is an array of fixatives and the tissue for which it should be used. Formalin, of course. Some of the fixatives I shall be touching upon. And one such thing is formalin. Routinely, we are using it day in and day out. And it is only a 40% solution. And when it is going to be diluted further, you get only a 4% formalin. So the advantages are it is rapid in penetration, easily available and cheap, does not over harden the tissue, easy to prepare. And commercial samples such as for paraformaldehyde prevent the precipitate getting formed. It permits most of the staining and formalin can be used for IHC. Only thing later on, it should be prevented or removed before the IHC is done. The disadvantages all of us know. It is an irritant, causes a sinusitis, even a laryngopharyngitis, etc. The precipitation of paraformaldehyde can be prevented by adding methanol. Formalin pigment, sometimes it is an irritant actually to the slide. We are not able to decipher what it is. And it is suspectedly carcinogenic. That is why one of my postgraduates is doing a study on reducing the quantum of formalin and increasing the alcohol. This is a superb classification derived from the net, of course. And I would like you people to kindly classify it thus. Classification is an aid to orderly thinking. There can be a simple one. So just name the chemical and it is over there. Second one is a compound fixative in which it can be a microanatomical, psychological or histochemical fixative. Accordingly, you have got these. So this particular one, I would like you people to kindly memorize. Worth its weight. This is one of the most important slides of today's class. I was taken aback when I was searching for some good pictures for you people. The need for fixation is not only just getting a slide, but in also preserving the tissue. See what is being done over here. At autopsy, the brain is being removed. Of course, it is perfused and it is fixed. Then slices are being made. After the slices are being made, these are again being fed into the computer. And you get multiple levels, sections. It can be coronal sections, it can be sagittal sections. And they are all again being refed into the computer and organized so that an entire three dimensional picture of the brain at different levels can be restructured. By this, one can study the anatomy and the morphology of the brain. This is being used very much in radio diagnosis and of course in teaching as well. And see, this is one very good preservation of the brain in agar. See the amazing development. So fixation is not just for us to preserve the tissue and to see the slide, but for restructuring and looking at it radiologically and gaining more knowledge, mounting of specimens, so on and so forth. This is another one that is very important. So they may ask you for enzyme study, what is the fixative that you use? For lipids, what is that? Is it clear? So there are some fixatives of choice, fixatives to avoid. So formalin or paraformaldehyde usually used in most for enzymes to use a frozen section so as to bypass the insult of chemicals. Lipids, we will have to avoid the alcohol because it dissolves the lipids. Mucopolysaccharides, again, chemicals are avoided, frozen sections are preserved. And this one we will have to do. Glycogen, osmium tetroxide is avoided, alcohol is preferred. So this again, you people will have to go through. In fact, each one of the tabular column and the flow diagrams that I had given, you people shall sit and read. There are some terms, of course, if you are going to answer very well in your exam, they might go to the second level of questions. 
and please do not underestimate the examiners they will be running their own lab there are pioneers in histopathology in laboratory techniques as well as in teaching and blood banking which one we will be getting as an examiner we do not know so there is something called a secondary fixation or post fixation after the fixation is done there are there is a second fixative that is over there and it makes a corresponding alteration for example fixed in glutaraldehyde is post fixed in osmium tetraoxide for electron microscopy histochemical fixation it preserves the constituents to be demonstrated ideally we will have to do a cryostat so that it bypasses all the chemicals of interest vapor fixation this can be done for slight particularly a leukemia slide formal vapor is done for fixation and then doing a cytochemistry on the leukemia again in a different bottle what is the target that you are having in mind and what is the fixative of choice kindly go through i would like you people to kindly by heart it at least before the examination sometimes there is something called as prolonged fixation we keep it in the formalin we forget and then we pay the penalty for it so what is the type of fixative if it is going to be formalin there can be a secondary shrinkage and the mode of rectification how it can be rectified is again you take it back to buffered formalin so that it swells a little bit hypertonic solution means saline it causes a shrinkage whereas a hypotonic will be causing a swelling alcoholic fixatives obviously are brittle there is something called venetian blinds i shall be showing you and calcium carbonate can cause interepithelial clefts or acanthocytosis this can be corrected by means of formula so this is again a technical term and please do not underestimate the technicians they are pioneers and they are our teachers there can be something called as pigment artifacts three main things i have included over here formalin mercury and chromium oxide some of these i shall be showing you in pictures and what is the method of removing them is also shown ammonium hydroxide can remove the formalin lugol iodine for mercury and acid alcohol for chromium oxide i told you about the artifacts of fixation see what is over here first of all what do i see i am finding multiple lines over here this we used to call as zebra lines or chattered effects but the best definition here will be the venetian blinds that are hanging on the screen and that is absent in the window behind my back so here there are multiple marks over here and that is called the venetian blind effect it is an artifact created due to fixation another very intriguing and rather irritating one will be a cleft between the planes of tissues you find that different tissues this is a mucosa over here this is a connective tissue and i am finding a cleft over here this can happen because the different tissues will contract in different rates as a result of which artificial clefts can be created particularly in a slide such as a skin you will have to rule out any of the bullous lesions the pigment artifact that we are talking about look at this this is not very uncommon in most of our slides we shall be seeing this and this can be removed by the method we had seen earlier mercury is another fixative it creates a brownish black pigment particularly in blood and this is another formalin pigment that is over here carnoise fixative it is a nuclear fixative carnoise fixative is also useful in another context particularly when you take the breast lymph nodes there will be too much of fat that is surrounding it we are supposed to immerse it in carnoise fluid which will be dissolving the fat preserving the nuclear and the cellular details the duration and all is given over here what are the components of it is given so the advantages are very much mentioned it preserves even the nissels granules and the glycogen electron microscopy so there are different stages of it i told you about formalin i told you about carnoise fixative i told you about the mercurial fixatives etc so this slide is exclusively for electron microscopy 
remember at least a couple glutaraldehyde osteum tetroxide are classical examples so the specimen is received there is a chemical fixation dehydration etc and finally the sections are being stained there is an image on to the electron microscope sometimes there can be a cryo immobilization and various extremes of temperature are being used there is a cryo sectioning and cryo electro therapy so what happens is once we have the slide in the electron microscope it is connected on to a computer and images are being taken just like a fluorescent microscope these techniques i shall be dealing with at a later date but please remember that the line of management is different for electron microscopy and that is what we are seeing over here i told you that there are two fixatives and here i am able to find the myelin figures so that is surrounding the nerve sheath so these are over here in electron microscopy thin sections will be required 2 to 3 microns the normal thickness is about 5 microns it has to be stored it can be causing conjunctivitis as well cytological fixatives this kind of a classification is given in kali what are the fixatives as such chemical classification and cytoplasmic fixatives cytological fixatives are given in kali and cytological fixatives are usually used where the cells will have to be preserved obviously there is a cell block you centrifugate and then you get a clump of cells fixed in bovine fluid for pap smears ethanol cytoplasmic fixatives champes fluid nuclear fixatives tarnoise fluid flux fluid etc these particular list try to know at least for the interest of it if you want to irritate your friends you can just ask what is champes fluid alcohol so this is a gem of a slide hope we get such pictures when we do the cytology study ethyl alcohol by itself is colorless it is powerful dehydrating it can cause shrinkage but the main thing it causes is coagulation of the proteins and enzyme histochemistry can be done and look at the fixation over here there is a preservation of the cell clusters nucleus and the cytoplasm when we talk about fixation there is another thing there are different types of tissues for which different fixatives can be used and this is for your eyes only i hope you people are able to recognize the eyeball over here with a tumor arising from the retina obviously it is a retinoblastoma even though i had a doubt of a melanoma but melanoma will be more common in the forehead a way of classifying the fixatives we have seen it in any number of places please recapitulate and dear students fixation is not limited to seeing a slide and reporting it it is of course meant for preserving the tissue but see what is there on my leg i am finding can you identify the technique that is being used it is immunohistochemistry the various components of a cell here it is a case of the seminiferous tubules wherein the cartilage cells are being demonstrated a bovine fluid can be used or a h5 can be used so the various fixatives again i had given this is a superb slide for you people in different contexts what else? nobody can make a job much more easier for you protein histopathology what do you use what is the percentage electron microscopy or adrenal what is the fluid bone marrow pelvis fluid zenker's fluid brain formalin ammonium bromide gastrointestinal biopsy again a bone fluid or a sussus fluid testis and ovary sussus eye formal saline i had shown you a section of the eyeball earlier renal biopsy neutral buffered formalin so the choice of the fixative is important and whenever you people read kindly develop this particular habit you try to recollect from what text it is asked because in case you are getting a very learned examiner they might ask you and the student will be right the examiner also will be right in such a case one of my colleagues had to bring in culling and show that both the block and the slide can be used in a case of elevated stain and both were right the student was appreciated 
mercury chloride and other fixatives and these are the natures of the fixatives it conjugates with other fixatives rapidly penetrates disadvantage of course mercury is being poisonous that is why even in a manometer nowadays we are having no mercury glutaraldehyde we had been mentioning earlier i would like you people to kindly appreciate it see this one this is something that our eyes do not see at all electron microscopy and it is a nanomicron and the advantage is there is a cross linking it is more rapid than formalin poor penetration sometimes it can give rise to false positive reactions of course it is costly technology technique and the qualified personnel all are required electron microscopy please do remember this i shall be coming to you people at a later date about the scanning and the transmission electron microscopy bones fluid superb look at the play of colors over here sometimes we do not have we know we are not able to diagnose even right now i am sitting on a slide i do not know whether it is a myoma or a sarcoma fibrosarcoma and then we had asked for some thing the bones fluid it is can be used for any of this, this is a meson strikeome that is being done and you find the different colors can be brought out over here demonstrates glycogen gastrointestinal biopsy excellent for trichrome screens please do remember test is again bovine fluid again see this is a fetus that is being developed and uh, am rather in fixation so here you see that there are the different stages of the animal fetus and how it is being preserved from which we get the section of course the yellow is color because of the picric acid is going to be there bovine's fixative look at the clarity i am able to see the different zones over here when compared with davidson's fixative these are all different ones so people have been experimenting over the years and ultimately arriving at an ideal fixative under the correct circumstance zenker's fluid mercury chloride over here rapid penetration reticular endothelial system and the lymph node and helis fluid is a modified zenkers this i wanted to just explain to you people this is more relevant in connection with autopsy rather than your routine processing in anatomy of course it will be important there is a technique called as perfusion we have spoken about heat fixation vapor fixation chemical fixation and then there is something called as perfusion fixation whenever an organ is removed it cannot be fixed and the different parts of it will have to be fixed here in this case under a pressure and an ideal combination of the fixatives i find that it is being injected into the heart the clot is being diluted and then when it is being injected or perfused the entire heart gets similarly they can be using it for other organs also and when it is being fixed thus see what you people are able to see the beautiful coronary arteries the blood vessels everything is standing apart and it is of course a specimen that has stood for several years anatomy it is very much important and those days one of the questions itself will be demonstrate the tracheobronchial tree or the bronchopulmonary segments or the gall bladder and the ducts so another one in the lung it is being used so i find that there is a manometer and then there are the different combinations of it and they are being injected into it the major blood vessels they go into the lung and then the different parts of it are being fixed it is not that i give slices and the tissue is getting fixed and this is reflected in the wonderful quality of the picture and all these are supposed to be for the measurements it is a manometer study wherein they are studying the thickness as well as the width of the alveoli perfusion again in the kidney nobody expects the kidney to be fixed this though this is an animal experiment in this i am able to find all the arcuate arteries the end artery the branches and so on so a beautiful fixation over here which is reflected as far as the 
electron microscope and the glomerular look at this one this is what we people are seeing in our text as photograph but little do we think how these are being fixed and see what is over here self preservation is the first law of nature samuel butler beautiful quotes on the other side i am finding the heart as such which is simply staring at us maybe it has been preserved for teaching and learning and to this may I add that tissue preservation is the first law of pathology can you people identify this particular organ and section of course i am finding here the shape of it quite thin but extremely huge it is there in gypnos so it is a guff went to a section of the lung and it is a specimen of an emphysema but see how well the entire alveoli the bronchial tree etc have been preserved and they are cut by means of a microtome sledge microtome is the one that is being used for it and coming to the quote over here with the advent of imaging already i told you in one example that there are multiple pictures and they are being fed into the computer going back to radio diagnosis with the advent of such imaging is pathology diagnosis taking a back seat or is it becoming obsolete it is becoming a topic for discussion the references are as shown over here and dear students thank you for being the reason i smile see you in next class